Hi everyone! Happy Halloween! <laughs> All right.、Um, I thought about what costume I should wear to tonight's live stream, but I couldn't come up with any good idea. Or I had some ideas, but I didn't have time to to actually get a costume. So what I want to share with you、um, is some information, some costumes that citizens in Shanghai have worn to、um, to the street that I. That I think you know reflects the the general mood in China right now. So here is a this young lady you know wearing a costume made up of white paper, right? In reference to the white paper movement, and here you have this guy I don't know wearing a, a surveillance camera <laughs> over his head, and this guy is wearing I think a a sports a sports.、Uh, A jacket that says China on it. He's wearing a mask. I think I think he's wearing a mask of Qin Gang, the missing foreign minister. And his poster said,、uh, "No matter how far away you are,、uh, you will be punished. No matter how far you are, or how far away you are." And then here you have、uh, people are making fun of zero COVID during the Shanghai lockdown. And then this is fascinating. Do you know what this little girl is wearing? <laughs> she's wearing the same outfit as Taiwan's president Tsai Ing-wen. So she she held a picture of Tsai Tsai Ing-wen, and then is wearing her outfit. And the, these two young men hold a, a banner, wearing a, a banner that shows the、um, Shanghai Stock Market Index,、uh, which is going down. And the other guy is holding a bunch of chives. You know the Chinese expression "cutting the chives," meaning you know taking advantage of of the ordinary people.、Um, this, you know what it is. <laughs> this man is wearing a mask of、uh, the deceased Li,、uh, Premier Li Keqiang, and I don't even want to talk about what he has in his hand. <laughs> And this is phenomenal. This came from a video.、Um, I think this is a Batman, you know. But he is walking down the street of Shanghai and followed by this、uh, rows of Ch-、uh, Shanghai police. It was a phenomenal video. It was quite something. But、um, do I have? Oh, and as a result, the Shanghai municipal government. Uh, fired the the person who was in charge of, who's、uh, the public, the head of the public security,、um, and、uh, within the the tourist and the cultural bureau. So this guy obviously is in charge of events like this, you know, Halloween celebration. But he's、um, the the law, law enforcement affiliated with the cultural and tourism bureau. But he is fired because of all the costumes he saw. All right.、Um, well, h- happy Halloween, trick or treat.、Um, do I have any treat? <laughs> All right.、Um, how come I don't see any comments? This is this is very. Oh, here we go. Okay. All right. Let's get back to our、um, the main body of tonight's discussion. We want to talk about the the removal of the two ministers, which took place in July. And August, right during the summer. So, if you look at CCP's,、uh, if you look at Xi Jinping before the Party Congress, he was mostly purging his political opponents, right, who were engaged in power struggles with him. But after the Party Congress, there has been a change,、um, because after at the Party Congress, he drove the opponents out of the Politburo. Um, and he has people who are considered his loyalists exclusively, but then he suddenly realized that the officials he personally handpicked do not have absolute loyalty to him. So he's trying to identify the two-faced individuals in his own circles. Worse yet, Xi Jinping's enemies have taken advantage of Xi's demand for abs- absolute loyalty and the weaknesses of his of his.、Um, Deputies or cronies, forcing Xi Jinping to sack his loyalists one by one. And the most dramatic 
one is, or the most dramatic two, um, are the missing foreign minister and the missing defense minister. Um, and then after missing for a couple of months, respectively, we heard about their final verdict last Tuesday. Um, it was in the evening of October 24th. That was a week from today. Xi Jinping, it, it was in the uh, CCTV, right, evening news. It was announced that Xi Jinping signed a presidential decree to remove Li Shangfu as a, a state councillor and minister of defense and remove Qing Gang as a state councillor. Qing had already lost his post as um, the foreign minister in July. Now, Li Shangfu's membership in the Central Military Commission is also gone, but it wasn't mentioned in the presidential decree because this is a military post. And no reason was given to explain the two ministers' downfall, and no announcement was made about Li Shangfu's replacement. Now, the removal of the two ministers reduced the number of state councillors from five to three. It's embarrassment to Xi Jinping because both ministers have been handpicked by him against CCP norms and conventions. Qing Gang was promoted on a, on a fa unprecedented fast track from a deputy minister to a state councillor within, I think, a little over than a year, maybe even less than a year, but it was within around a year time frame. Uh, and then Li Shangfu, who is sanctioned by the United States, was the most unlikely candidate picked for the defense minister's job uh, because as defense minister, he would have to interact with the, his counterparts in other parts of the world and inevitably the American, right? The American defense team. But Xi Jinping picked him regardless. So we'll talk about um, first, there's some general conclusions we can make about the two cases. Now we'll talk about Qing Gang and Li Shangfu's troubles. And then we'll talk about how this drama or these two, the, the downfall of these two ministers has weakened Xi Jinping's power. And then we'll talk about this one man who has benefited from this drama because there are losers, there are also winners. So who has won from this drama? All right, first things first, what conclusions can we draw? Based on the information we've gathered in the past four months, well, actually, Yes, for no, three months since July. It's three, a little over three months. We can make the following conclusions about the two cases. The first is the downfall of the two ministers are not isolated cases. They are linked. If they were independent of each other, then CCP wouldn't have dealt with them together. They wouldn't make the announcement together. They would have dealt with them one by one just trying to save Xi Jinping's face, because that's important to him. Um, and then secondly, the, their cases are beyond ordinary financial corruption or sexual promiscuity cases. They are linked to the rocket force, which is undergoing a massive cleansing and shakeup. Three, the investigation of the two cases has gone beyond the jurisdiction of the party's central commission of discipline and inspection, the very organization that typically handles the investigation of corrupt officials. Their cases are handled by CCP's intelligence organization or intelligence agency, the state security, um, the, the ministry of state, the, the ministry of state security, because much of the problems uh, it, that these two cases um, present took place outside China. And so the spy agency is involved in the investigation. And last but not least, one very important person in these two cases is Qing Gang's mistress, TV presenter Fu Xiaotian. She posted a picture with her son on a private jet oh, um, on April the 10th. I have a picture of that. Here we have the struggle. You have, you know, two of them sacked already. Here they are being sworn in um, in March uh, as uh, as part of the the new cabinet. 
And here we have uh, the scandalous couple from the summer. <laughs> okay. Oh, here we oh, what, what happened? What happened to my post? I always lose my last my last slide. Okay, anyways, it's not that important. Let's just stay on this page. This page is is more fascinating. But basically on April 10th, um Miss Fu posted her very last her very last um Weibo post uh with a picture of her son, she and her, her, both her son and herself on a private jet. Uh, with the destination with the destination described as uh, 前方, meaning ahead <laughs> uh, I'm I'm going I'm going forward I'm I'm just you know it's it's a very vague destination but anyways so that was that was the last time and and her despite all these drama that have that has evolved her posts are still there they're not removed. Um, so, so okay. So now, now let's talk about what ha what has happened to them, right? So, uh, oh, so so um, okay. About Fu Xiaotian, I said that she is a major person, a major character in in these two cases. Um, she was she left for China. On, April the 10th, and Qing Gang disappeared from the public eye on June 25th. So a little more than two months after she returned to China, um, the foreign minister disappeared. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. And um, she was said to be ordered to return to China and was detained upon arrival for investigation. So since the two two ministers were missing, there was there have been so many different stories, speculations, and rumors about what has happened, uh, and the stories about the foreign minister Qin Gang were especially juicy because there's a there's a woman involved, and now that their fate is final or is official, let's sift through the various stories and and rumors and reconstruct what might have happened um, of course what i'm going to present you is not verified facts but i but it's what i think is the most logical sequence of events based on everything i've gathered um, first of all what we know is that the claim that Qin Gang's mistress is a CCP agent um, is not disputed. This is widely accepted as, um, as an effect. Her connection with the rocket force commander and his family, and also the claim that she is a double agent uh, working for both the U.S. and China, is also very likely. Um, and so the claim that she's a double agent goes like this. The Americans are interested in Ms. Fu. She, she knows the rocket force commander who has a son who studied in the U.S. and who also works, I think, works in the U.S. So through Ms. Fu, the Americans reached out to the son and obtained valuable information. Qing Gang may not be aware of his mistress's activities. However, the activities of the son of the rocket force commander caught the attention of a CCP agent in the U.S. who reported the matter to both Qing Gang, the then ambassador to, to the U.S., and also a staff at the China's State Security Ministry. The state security staff immediately reported the info to the top leader, I think Xi Jinping in this case, but Qing Gang, the ambassador's report, came in late. He delayed reporting because his mistress asked him to help the rocket force commander's son in hopes of squashing the matter. Qing might have tried, but eventually, you know, brought the matter to Beijing. 
So at this point, the minister may or may not be in serious trouble yet. The min the minister's trouble started after his mistress returned to China. While being investigated or interrogated, she revealed that Qin Gang had tried to intervene in the capacity of of the ambassador. Um, and another theory believes that the woman was ordered to return to China. Um, as Xi Jinping was already suspicious of Qin. Qing Gang, or somebody was suspicious of Qing Gang. Um, they just didn't want to leave the mistress in the U.S. as they investigate the minister, because they fear that she might make a scene in the while in while being in the U.S. I think this this um, theory, the possibility that this theory is true, is is less likely. But anyways, so it. It is very more likely that the woman, um, ex you know, told the, the 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 people who who were interrogating her, Qing Gang's role in this case, and that's when the foreign minister uh, got involved. Now, <clears throat> as far as how she became a U.S. spy, that nobody knows, but there's one theory which I don't quite. Believe, but I thought it's it's kind of interesting. Um, the Financial Times reported in September that Fu Xiaotian had a surrogate child with Qing Gang in the U.S. The child was born on November twenty fifth, twenty twenty two, according to Miss Fu's her internet post, um, because she she celebrated her baby's a hundred a hundred day birthday, and so. People backtracked to figure out that the, the baby was born on November 25th. So this means that when the child was conceived, Qing Gang was already the ambassador to the U.S. So Fu and Qing planned to have a surrogate child while Qing was the ambassador. Now, surrogacy is legal in, in 47 states in the U.S., but it requires many legal paperwork um, documenting the parents. So the names of the parents are revealed in the US. Um, American intelligence thus became aware of this, that the, the Chinese ambassador is planning to have a child, you know, in, a surrogate child in the US. And some believe that the Americans used, used this as a leverage to make Ms. Fu work for them. Anyways, that's just the theory. I thought I thought it's quite fascinating. Um, I'm not saying that I definitely believe in I definitely believe in that, but I I just thought it's fascinating. Um, but anyways, Ching Gang's fall is very very likely attributable to his role in the Rocket Force espionage case, and the person who got him into trouble was his mistress. Now, Li Shangfu's problem was different. Li was the commander of China's manned space program uh, for years and has very close ties with the rocket force leadership. His problem is that he is perceived as being two-faced to Xi Jinping. He is also um, he's on, on the surface a hardline uh, took a hardline position um, in defending uh, Xi Jinping's policy of um, achieving Taiwan unification by force. But privately, he shares the same view as the rocket force commander and then the, possibly the political commissar, who are among the PLA officers um, holding a pessimistic view of a military operation against Taiwan. Um, as the head of the CMC's, the uh, Central Military Commission's Equipment Development Department, Li is also held accountable for corruption in the department. His problem directly impacted almost every branch of the PLA, including the fuel used in the missiles, the equipment on the submarine, anti-corrosive materials used on tanks and armored vehicles, and so on. The corruption of his department directly resulted in the PLA's hardware um, being in a mess. 
And the biggest event that might have, you know, might have, you know, gave the final blow to his job is the recent nuclear submarines accident. Uh, because that accident took place on August 21st. And Defense Minister Li Shangfu went missing on August 30th, nine days after that. Um, Li's lack of loyalty and corruption is said to have profoundly angered Xi Jinping because she had trusted him. Ms. Minister Qin Gang got into trouble because of women, women and poor judgment, whereas Minister Li's disloyalty is unforgive, you know, un is not forgivable, is not forgiven. Um, so that's why he, Li, Shang, Li Shangfu was removed from all three positions without explanation at the same time. Whereas Qin's, um, Qin was given, or Qin Gang had been given a rare health excuse for his absence in the early days. CCP never used health as an excuse for missing officials since Deng Xiaoping's time. It shows that while investigation was ongoing, Xi Jinping saved a chance for Qin Gang, and his state councilor position had also been kept for two months before it was stripped away on, uh, uh, it was stripped away last Tuesday. In the end, Xi Jinping couldn't save him because his affair with Miss Fu was um, gossip material, <laughs> was gossip all over the world. It, you know, Xi Jinping had to let him go. But his problem was, uh, was a, a different, uh, there's a different in nature from Li Shangfu's problem. Now let's talk about how this has weakened Xi Jinping's power. In the history of the CCP, there has never been the sacking of both the foreign minister and the defense minister, but Xi Jinping was forced to sack both of them. Moreover, Xi Jinping is having a hard time filling the positions because whomever he puts in those two positions may end up having the same fate as Li Shangfu and Qin Gang. It highlights Xi Jinping's predicament in which anyone he puts in those positions or any other crucial positions, right, would become the target of Xi Jinping's enemies with damning evidence collected against these two, these individuals. It's very difficult for him to find a CCP official who's not corrupt or not having a mistress. So once someone becomes his chosen one, um, his close ally or his trusted one, Xi Jinping's enemy will create circumstances to air these individuals' dirty laundries. We've seen this pattern in the past couple of months. We've heard about the rumors. We've heard rumors about Premier Li Qiang's wife and daughter and the fact that he may have a, a foreign, a Western son-in-law. Um, we've also heard about the rumor of Nanela Puri Bureau Standing Committee member Ding Xuxiang, who has been rumored to have resigned or even committed suicide. Um, Why, why am I having, okay, I, I don't know. I lost track of the pages I have, but it's okay. Um, anyways, so Qing Gang was, so the question is, was Qing Gang the only CCP official who has a mistress living in the U.S. and a son born in the United States? I don't think so. Was Li Shangfu the most corrupt PLA officer contributing to many PIA hardware failure. Not at all. But their enemies, as well as Xi Jinping's enemies, have collaborated and used these weaknesses against them. And that's why Xi Jinping could up, couldn't make up his mind naming a new defense minister. Hong Kong's Mingbao Daily said that the reason Beijing didn't announce a replacement for Xi Jinping, I mean for Li, Li Shangfu, was Xi Jinping cannot find anyone. That's partially true. Even if Xi Jinping did find someone, it's hard to say 
um, it's hard for him to actually put that person in that position because he worries that this person may end up in this, you know, having the same fate as Li Shangfu. Um, and one argument is why do you think Xi Jinping put the good old Wang Yi back to be in charge of the foreign ministry? Well, it's because one had been foreign minister for 10 years before be being promoted. He had been in, the, in that position long enough and no one can touch him, right? So for the same reason, Xi Jinping is using the two vice chairmen of the Central Military Commission to play the role of a defense minister at the, um, the Xiangshan Defense Forum that's ongoing. I, here I do have pictures. I do have pictures. This is this is Zhang Youxia. Sorry, this is Zhang Youxia. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I lost. I uh, uh, exit full screen. Sorry, here we go. Zhang Youxia giving an opening welcome at this um, Beijing Xiangshan Forum. It's a defense forum. So he was playing the role of a host. He was really playing the role of a defense minister. And his, the second vice chairman, the, the guy who, rank, af, who ranks after him, uh, He Weidong, was also there. So they split the, he, Xi Jinping split the duty between the two, between the two vice chairmen. And the very reason is these two guys, these two guys are veteran enough, are senior enough that it's very difficult for anyone to, to, um, to overthrow them, right? So you see, it's, it's the same pattern. Xi Jinping wants to use very, very senior people, um, to, um, in this position to run the foreign ministry and then the defense ministry precisely because because he feared that if he put anyone new or younger in in those two positions, <laughs> the chances for them to survive the political attack is not great. Um, so to summarize, Xi Jinping's power has significantly been weakened for the following three reasons. One, Xi Jinping is becoming more and more isolated as he doesn't have a lot of people he can trust. Um, Number two, his relations with the princelings in the military has deteriorated further. Now, Li Shangfu is a princeling. So his sacking and downfall has further, has further alienated the princelings in the PLA. Xi Jinping recently replaced the chief justice of the PLA military court because the former justice was passive, or in his opinion, too passive, in the process to prosecute uh, another princeling, the famous General Liu Yazhou, the military strategist who wrote many books, who also uh, doesn't see eye to eye with Xi Jinping in the military, in, in his military strategy against Taiwan. So Xi Jinping was upset with the, the chief justice and got rid of him and put in a new guy because he does want to see Liu Yazhou prosecuted. Um, that's number two. Number three, morale. The PLA went through a cleansing, a major a systemic cleansing from 2013 to 2016 in the name of a military reform after Xi Jinping took power. It's too soon for another wave of political cleansing within the military. So everyone is super nervous and the morale, you know, um, is, I mean, when, you know, when the military servicemen, when there's no morale, I don't know how he can start a war. You know, people don't want to fight for you. You know, people are scared to death. I mean, so that's, that's seriously, I think, undermining his power. Now, when there are losers, there are also winners. There's one man who has risen to prominence through these political drama. And that is Polybureau member, uh, let me show you his picture. I do have a picture of him. Oh, I do. Chen Wenqing. Um, he is the head of the Central Political and Legal Commission. He was China's formal spy chief, uh, the guy who heads the state security ministry. Um, 
Now, if you look at the investigation involving Qin Gang and Li Shangfu, the normal organizations that would have handled the investigation, that's the party's central commission for discipline inspection, and also the military commission for discipline discipline inspection uh, could not have handled their investigation uh, because because their cases involved activities outside China's border. Um, they involved activities like they, they involved Qin Gang and his mistress Fu Xiaotian's affair and their activities, their surrogate son, in the U.S., and it also involves the rocket force, uh, the son of the rocket force commander's activities. Uh, <laughs> the rocket force commander's son's activities in the U.S. Right. So all th this type of investigations fall under the territory of the state security, the the intelligence um, agency. So Chen Wenqing is the man. Um, he he was. You know, before his promotion to become the head of the legal, political, and legal apparatus, he was the spy chief. He still is a spy chief, and um, he came from intelligence background. So this man has now become very powerful due to these internal investigations. Now, you know, in the CCP system, the most important job that gains uh, a person power and authority is the one that investigates your peers, right? So you all of a sudden get all these power when you're put in charge of investigating your peers. Um, so let's talk about who he, who this guy is. He was, um, he, he was the first minister of state security ever to join the Politburo. So when he was promoted to the Politburo in at the Party Congress last October, he became the first um, CCP spy chief ever joined the Politburo. And when that happened, people say that shows the importance um, in spies or intelligence um, intelligence work have or will play in Xi Jinping's rule uh, going forward. So, and I think the recently enacted espionage law is another um, aspect of, of this. So in 2023, this guy Chen Wenqin directed CCP committees at all levels to, quote, attach great importance to concern themselves with and support covert front work. Okay, covert front work. Um, that just means, you know, um, it's the, the rules, the CCP would, Xi Jinping would have to rely on undercover agents <clears throat> to carry out, to, to, to be able to hold on to power, uh, both internally and externally. Another example to show how, why this man is, has become so powerful is, remember I talked about Foxconn's founder, um, Taiwanese billionaire, Terry Gao, no, Terry Kuo, Guo Taiming, Terry Guo, depends on how you pronounce it. Um, he, he was, he, this Chen Wenqing guy, this, this guy you're looking at on, uh, in the picture, he was put in charge of the tax and land probe of the Taiwanese billionaire, the, the Foxconn founder. And if, if you think about it, that's odd. Why would an intelligence officer, like why would CIA be involved in investigating, you know, some a company's tax irregularities and and illegal land use, right? Well, it's because the Fox Foxconn founder is running for president in Taiwan, and anything to do with Taiwan and that, you know, the Taiwan presidential election is definitely part of this covert front work. Um, so I would say watch out for this guy. Uh, I think we'll see more, more and more of him in coming months. Even if we don't see him directly, I think he will play a bigger role in Xi Jinping's inner circles. Um, 
and um, he would he would do more to help Xi Jinping stay in power. Okay, that's all. Um, hope this is helpful. Let me get rid of these pictures. These people don't necessarily look <laughs> um, pretty, shall we say? Um, I think the 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 Halloween costumes we saw at the beginning of the program uh, is is much more interesting than these than these pictures. Alrighty, let me see if people have questions for me. Um, all right, let me address the the super que super questions. Tron NGO. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Elizabeth Loveland. Lay, I'm so disappointed that you didn't wear a Winnie the Pooh costume for Halloween. I really, that was my first choice. But I didn't, you know, I didn't have time to go get one. Even to get a little, I should get a little Winnie the Pooh. Put that on my desk. Um, that would be my choice. Yes, I know. I'm disappointed too. I'm I'm utterly disappointed in myself too. I I seriously wanted to wear a costume to this to this program. All right. <laughs> okay. Let me see. But I thought the people the, the pictures I shared with you in the beginning those costumes are more meaningful and fascinating. Sorry. This is this is what is this? Okay. Um let me see if people have questions. All righty. Um, Lei, from Click All Night, am I wrong to think that the woman's espionage might just be some minor rule she broke? Seems like many are accused by CCP of spying for trivial things. Even cars are accused. You mean the woman wasn't really a spy and she was just accused of being of spying? Well, the woman definitely is. I mean, if you, if you look at her track record, right? I, we, we did a number of programs talking about her background during the summer. So she, she, you know, the organization that she was affiliated with, the media outlet that she worked for, the media outlet was affiliated with a uh, with the, the the one of the spy agencies. That China has several spy agencies. Um, so, so that woman definitely has a spy ag intelligence background. So she is a spy working for China. So minor rules she broke. Minor rules she broke. Well, she definitely broke the rule of if she's a spy, the fact that she was so high profile, you know, I mean, she was airing dirty laundry. I mean, she was like exposing her affair with China's foreign minister on, on social media. I mean, the, she was giving, dropping all kinds of hints about their affair, their having a child the fact that the child was born in the U.S. I mean, that just broke all the rules <laughs> if she's a spy. I mean, even if she's not a spy, you know, I mean, she could get herself into trouble, and she did, you know. So, uh, Bomb PSY, can I buy the movie rights on the foreign minister USA spy mistress story. I don't know who you're going to buy that rights from. Not from me, because I don't own this right. Um, you want to buy it from me? <laughs> you're free to come up with your own. You may write a script that's even more fascinating than the one I told you. So you can make one yourself. You don't need to spend money to buy the rights. But I love that idea. Ed C, why are beautiful flowers always put on the podium at conferences in China? Why are beautiful? Well, to, to show their, they have money. To show, yeah. It's just to show they have money. It's quite wasteful, right? It's government. Because 
here government are spending taxpayers' money. So if the government spends so much money on beautiful flowers, we would say, well, why do you need the flowers for the meeting, for the conference rooms? There, the, 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 the whole country serve the CCP leaders. They, they do whatever they want. So it's different. Um, okay, so Mitsu, I have horror movie recommendations for you since it is Halloween. Have you seen The Eye by the Pan Brothers, Palm Brothers, or the Japanese horror movie Dark Water? No, I have not. I am not a. F I I <laughs> I get scared when I watch horror movies, so um. I'm, I'm one of those people who don't like to watch very scary movies. I tend to close my eyes. <laughs> people laugh at me for doing that, you know, even for, for you know, n not very scary scenes. I will close my eyes. David Lopan, thanks for being awesome. And thank you for the quality and integrity you put in this show. Well, thank you. Do you have costume for Le Leonard Walton? Do you have costume on your double agent? Do I have my costume on my double agent? Am I a double agent? No, I think I'm too dumb to play double agent. I would tell them everything. I think I'm too honest to, to play the role of not even double agent, single agent. <laughs> I think I'm too honest. I would just tell them, you know, um, no, nobody wants to hire me as an agent. So do I have a costume? No. You know. Um, oh, unless you're not asking me. You're asking, uh, do I have a costume to suggest for Miss Fu Xiaotian? Well, she has so many beautiful clothes that she's wearing. Those are all her costumes. So she has more costumes than I do. So I don't have anything to recommend for her. I think she, <laughs> her beautiful costumes have allowed her to, de to deceive many people. So, um, um, Moonwalker, Lei, she's firing all, the top, all his top people and they are all old. It doesn't seem there are, there are up and coming young CCP members. Is the young generation too incompetent or do they not hold CCP values? Um, Xi Jinping worries about promoting. I mean, Qin Gang is younger, right? Qin Gang is is young, uh, but look at the trouble he got himself into. So he, Xi Jinping is very concerned to put anyone younger who has not been tested, who has not withstand the test of internal political infighting. Um, so, so younger people means these people may not withstand the pressure or. You know, they may still be, they may be, I don't know, they may have all kinds of issues that they have not resolved. Um, and then the biggest risk is these younger people may be perceived as Xi Jinping's successor, or, or they will be groomed to become his successor, or, or a candidate, they will become candidates uh, to be selected, to be further selected um, to become his successors. And people will try to sabotage them. So it's very difficult, you know. Xi Jinping's biggest enemy is not the United States, is his internal political enemy within the CCP. So these people will do everything they can to destroy these young people's future. So, so that's why he's very um, careful not to appear to be choosing anyone, right? Look at all the young, younger people he chosen, Ding Xuexiang. I even did a program. Ding Xuexiang is the youngest member of the Politburo Standing Committee member of the seven-person committee. He's the only one in the 50s. The other ones are all in their 60s. So immediately people assumed he would, because he, he, Xi Jinping would have to put that person into the Politburo Standing Committee now if he want that person to succeed him five years from now. So if you look at everyone in the Politburo Standing Committee, Ding Xuexiang is the only one who's in his 50s. So he became the natural heir, you know, choice of successor. But look at 
you know, I mean, he has recently lost favor. He was rumored to have committed suicide. He was rumored to resign. All of these things are the result of um, the attack or the, you know, I mean, yeah, oftentimes these people are not, you know, once you assume that role, you are subject to jealousy, you know, attack, abuse, rumor, all kinds of things. And then the question is, do you stay, you know, can you withstand that kind of test? And then another question is, will Xi Jinping continue to trust you? Um, and it seems to me that Xi Jinping always falls into this kind of trap. Like this is, he is so easily, I mean, he, he has lost so many loyalists precisely due to all, all the, the, the tricks his enemies have played on him. Um, so, um, Cresso Bylan Lay, you'd be head of analyst in CIA. Okay, all righty. Well, if you say so, I don't mind. All right. Comedy, love things that make me laugh. Okay, good, yes. Uh, Peter, Xi Jinping doesn't like younger and beautiful people. Uh, okay, Bond, PS, PSY. She's worst enemies at the room with him are are in the room with him correct that's a good observation all right um mitsu like there's a saying about beautiful chinese women being such a distraction and ruin to kingdoms that opposing rulers will send them over the reason is men give them too much time mistress can cancer yeah, there's a there's a famous you know of the thirty six stratagems, there's one called beauty trap, and you know, so men fall for them. So that has that trick has been played for thousands of years and still being played today, and it seems to work. And it's also it's also the very weapon the CCP uses in the West. I mean, I have seen that. I've heard that over and over again. You know, um, so yeah, and sometimes it may not be. Sometimes I think CCP is is sometimes they don't even. It may not be a physical relationship. It could be a mental. Like they will send, you know how they target these um, KOLs in the West. They will send young, well-educated, beautiful Chinese women to come to these. Older men. I mean, I, I, when I say older men, I'm not talking about men in their 80s or 70s, you know, like 60s, uh, maybe in their 70s. But they will send, like, you know, women in their late 20s, early 30s, and they will come appear as if they're, like, seeking a device, like, you know, and they look up to you, you know, they look up to you. They, they even... Uh, they, they show you so much respect and they're proper in their behavior. They're not like this, you know, promiscuous woman, you know. So they're well educated, they're intelligent, they're beautiful, they have proper manner, but they they come and they 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 show you so much respect. They they are here to seek a device from you because they're Chinese and they want to understand Western society, they want to understand American politics. And as a Western man, and they, they want to help these young, you know, Chinese women. So they do everything they can to help these young women. But do they know that these women are came with a purpose? So, yeah, so that's one tactic. It doesn't have to be a physical relationship. That kind of relationship works every time for CCP. So... But over time, I think you would know because like these women will suddenly disappear or their behavior will change because they cannot, I mean, they can only put on a face, they can only put on an act for so long. Eventually they will still show who they are, what their intentions are over time. But for the first, for the initial period of time, uh, a lot of people are fooled. All right, let me see. Um, uh, 
uh, Sumilan said, you guys are still here. Oh, by the way, Sumilan, I lost my other moderator. So you are the only moderator now on my show. Uh, just so that, so that, you know, all right. I think that seems to be it. Elizabeth Loveland, Lei, yes, the type of girl you described is the most dangerous to many older men. Yeah, did I, did, did I, because I know that too well. I was, a man told me that. Uh, a, 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 very, a high profile Western man who holds a very important position told me that. But he didn't tell me, he didn't tell me that these women came with ulterior motives. Um, but he said he does, he did describe the phenomena where major Chinese organizations like CCTV, like the state owned TV, state owned enterprises, uh, state owned media outlets using these well-educated young Chinese women to approach these, um, major Western institutions. He told me that. So, uh, Agent Otaku Lei, what's the difference between Xi and Putin's government? Because Russia seems united before and during war, but China is not even is not is not even though China has the most uniformed military. What's the difference? They're both authoritarian. But one is communist, one is the other is not. And I tell you, the one the one that's still communist is much more dangerous. Okay. Um all righty, let me see. Oh, John Smith. Lei, what's going on with the Li Keqiang's funeral? No one is allowed to be at Tiananmen Square. Yes. I want to give you an update. Uh, no one is allowed to be Tiananmen Square. It's utterly disappointing because they're not holding an official wake for him. They're not holding an official funeral, state funeral for him. And according to the pictures released on social media where, um, where he, people pay tribute to him, it's like the scale, the setup is so small. It's almost like a home, um, a home, I shouldn't, it, it's just, it's not unfitting. It's unfitting for a formal premiere. So um, it's, it's very troubling. And they decided that they decided to cremate his body on November 2nd against, I heard his family, his wife's um, will. His wife has asked for auto, autopsy of his body. There was a former journalist a retired um, Xinhua journalist who sent an open letter asking the regime to investigate his death and to conduct an autopsy on his body, but there's no response. So all of these are making the entire nation more suspicious of the cause of his death. Um, did I answer your question? I think I did. And there's a lot more. Uh, there's a lot more going on. And people who have, people like myself who live outside China, who have been um, exposing CCP's secrets, um, the, the man who has exposed, the man who has heard, who got information about Li Keqiang's death, uh, I, I told you about that in my last program. He did not elaborate on the detail, but he just said, based on information he heard, you know, like Li Keqiang died in a very horrendous, had a horrendous death, something to that effect. And then this guy who disclosed that information, even though he didn't say, he didn't give the detail, he just said, it's unbelievable how the guy died. That's all he said. And then this man's family members in China was warned by the authorities uh, about they, the, his families in China were, were warned about him not saying too much about what's going on. So that's, that's what's happening.
Um, okay, Looney Tune seventy eight. Are the lights that eliminate eliminate you? You mean illuminate me? <laughs> I don't have lights that eliminate me. I hope not. I hope these lights don't eliminate me. You mean illu illuminate me? Made in China. Yes, I think they are. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to find lighting that's not made in China unless you spend a good amount of money, and I don't have that kind of money to spend on lighting. Um, Semtex eighty six. In one earlier video, you mentioned Jiang Zemin's grandson was the richest man in China. Does she go after rich princelings, or are princelings off limits? He does go after the princelings. Right, right now, the the term Xi Jinping's economics is he go he's going after the rich people in China, particularly the ones who don't support him, and and they say that the average he gets a hundred. He gets on average a hundred million RMB, which is about fifteen million U.S. dollars. The average amount of money he collects from each corrupt official or each corrupt businessman is fifteen million U.S. dollars, and that's a lot of money. So that's why he's going all after them. That's his way of getting money. You see that? That's that's his incentive for sacking all these people. It's it's the money that he's going after. Max Schroeder, what's your opinion of the Communist Party of Vietnam? Why is the West so deluded and believe that they are better than the CCP? Is the West repeating mistakes again? Vietnam U uses USA and China. I that's what I've been saying. The United States should learn a lesson from China and don't repeat the same mistake they made with. Um, with China in Vietnam, before investing money, before supporting Vietnam, tell them they need to undergo serious political reform. They need to pass laws. And they need to give people freedom. Otherwise, they should not invest in Vietnam. Otherwise, you are raising another baby tiger. You know, because my my friend, my friends in Vietnam told me that the only reason that the Vietnamese Communist Party Is not censoring like Google, Facebook, these social media platforms. It's because they don't have the money to do that. They don't have the money or the technology to do that. It's not that because they don't want to. So now, if you give them all the money, they may become CCP number two. So the United States and West, you should wake up and think. Um, all right. When do you think China will come out of a failed communist rule and become a democratic country? Big fan, hand purple, blue piece. When it depends on when the Chinese people are ready. Um, I think the changes will come from within. It, it, the question is when will the Chinese people to say? Which Chinese people say enough is enough? We've had enough. We seriously want change. It could be very fast. It could it could also be, you know, but I don't think it will be a long time. I don't think it will, we're talking about decades. You know, I think it's it's a matter of number of years because the way the with the with the way the Chinese economy is going, uh, it's and it's not gonna be in another decade for sure. Looney Tomb seventy eight. When you buy made in China, you give the CCP machine. Um, I try not to, but if I could find an alternative, I will. But sometimes it's hard, especially on these lighting equipment. You know, all, a lot of audio video equipments are made in China. From Har Haram, is there a possibility for people of China to be freed from communist corrupt leaders abusing them? Yes, absolutely. I believe that. Um, uh, Mitsu, to be fair, though Vietnam has never had expansionist aims like China. That's true. I um, I think even though I I. Said that the Western nations should 
you know, learn their lesson from China. I do agree with you that um, because when I compare Vietnamese people and the culture that's in Vietnam today versus the culture in China, I see a difference. There's no other communist country where people's ideology, um, I think Vietnam, Vietnamese people, they still have, they still have, they have, have preserved like the, the, the part of their culture, their traditional values and their culture. Um, whereas the Chinese, their mindset, their ideology, their behavior have been turned upside down because of cultural revolution. The CCP has completely twisted, you know, the Chinese people's behavior and mindset. And so, and and the, and then the the Vietnamese Communist Party hasn't haven't done that much damage to the Vietnamese people and its society, so I think there is still a a change. There's still I mean a difference. You're right. Okay, I'll take one last question and I'll end it here. Nick Furry, could CCP use bribes and and honey trap? Oops, where did I go? On Gavin Newsom to cultivate him. They could, um, they they they're going to do that on anyone, on anyone they they think they'll have a chance of succeeding. Um, but I don't know, uh, I don't know. Did Gavin Newsom's wife go with him to China? I think she went with him, didn't she? So that that may reduce the chance. All right. Richard W., thank you. The 10th Beijing Xiangshan Forum concluded Tuesday in Beijing. What's this forum? It's the defense forum. It's a, a defense forum that China uh, hosts, has been hosting. It's the number 10. Um, they invite all the defense ministers from around the world to have a, a dialogue on defense, and China is the host. So that's what it's all about. And so Russia was kind of the guest of honor this time. Russia's defense minister came. So while the Russian defense minister gave a speech, the, the US did not send its defense minister, it sent his a deputy, one of his deputies. So when the Russian defense minister was giving a speech, the US delegates uh, left. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a move, right? Mm. Okay. Alrighty, that's all. Thank you very much for joining me. That's all for tonight. Stay well. Till um, and I'll see you next time. Okay, good night or good day. Okay, bye bye, and happy Halloween.